Welcome to month 11 of the Lead Dad Diaries with Skip Cherry Holmes. I'm your host, Paul Sullivan. We, uh, Skip, 11 months now we've been uh, chatting. Have, have we learned anything? Oh, man. I'm getting older. <laughs> We're 11 months older. <laughs> I'm, I'm a month older. Uh, man, it's 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 crazy uh, that that... I'm anxious to see what things literally look like. I'm most excited, you know, about month next month, month 12, because, you know, good or bad, we, we always know that, uh, that one year mark is a huge piece. I know, um, not to, to be, uh, a downer, but that's a big thing for people who have a loved one who's passed away. It's like getting through that first year establishes how you can move on forward from that point. Yeah. And same thing with, you know, when you have a big landmark, you have a child that that one year mark of having a child kind of proves to you, oh, I can be a parent now. You know, uh, I, I made it through the first year. I can move forward. Um, and so, you know, this whole venture that I've been on, I've been really looking forward to seeing what it feels like when when you actually have that closure of, yeah, OK, this is what life is now. This isn't okay, I, I, I did a one year experiment and now it's time to, to, to see what else is up. Uh, this is, you know, one year into this new, uh, life. Really. Have you started and thinking of it in those terms though? Like a before and after, like a metaphorical, I mean, not to be morbid with you cause you're on those, like a metaphorical death of the old skip and a metaphorical birth of the new skip as a lead dad is that you know the before I, I honestly i have in some ways yeah. in some ways it's not practical uh, you know especially the the we'll call it the death of the old skip uh, was the uh was the always gone mind always torn touring all of that uh, and coming to terms, you know, kind of like, you know, when you're, when you're coming to terms with things like that, coming to terms with, yeah, you know, it's, it's a great thought. It's a great thing, but honestly, I, I don't, I don't miss that part. I don't, I don't long for it to come back. I don't long for myself to go bust back out on the road. Um, so yeah, but, but I have been thinking about things in kind of the terms of, this is a new me uh, and it's it's taken a year of growth uh, insane growth uh and i i love that because i've always felt that if i'm not growing or if i'm not learning then i'm just yeah. kind of standing still and I, I don't like standing still wow i love it you know and for people listening month 12 is going to be big we even have a yeah. special guest it's going to be uh, awesome. We're not gonna we're gonna say not gonna say who the special guest is yet. Uh, said special. We're gonna guest tell all the secrets. A, will just appear. Uh, whoever said special guest is. Uh, I know. So all right. So eleven months in. Skip and Paul. Uh, the progression of Skip's lead dad journey, and it's been fantastic. And we know how this works, Skip. Right? We we, we should have these questions memorized by now. But uh, we start off like we always do, Skip. What's been the best part of the past month? Well, last month, honestly, has had a lot of great parts. Um, uh, Stephanie's cousin got married at the beginning of the month, which was really cool. Uh, there was an original uh, intention for me to actually, that was going to be my first officiated wedding officiation. Um, but the, some details got pulled left and right on that. Uh, and the the anyway it's it's not important how that but i was able to uh do something at their uh their um reception dinner which was was really cool uh obviously it's super bowl which means wings obviously uh i don't know are you a wing guy skip of course i mean who who isn't it's un american not to have <laughs> not to have wings there's nothing like the buffalo wings and then you, the the ranch dressing i'm not like uh not big into like trying different flavors I've, I've tried the teriyaki on occasion i don't love it i just go straight buffalo with with the blue cheese i'm the opposite i'm oh. i i have to try different flavors i have to try different flavors and i i make mine in the air fryer uh which you know is 
that's good on the conscience. But uh, <laughs> I uh, I think I went through about 35 or 40 wings throughout the whole Super Bowl game just in my my own because nobody else in my family eats them. So I just keep on making them, keep on eating them. <laughs> uh, but it's never a bad day. Uh, and then um, my, uh, you know, Sideline actually released a song. We hadn't released a song in two years. Uh, the last time we were in the studio actually was in 2020. That album came out the summer of 2021. And that was the last time I had actually been in the studio until last November. And I feel like I talked about that in the November coverage about popping into the studio and recording a few songs, but one of them was actually released uh, back in the middle of the month. And that was exciting too, because nobody was really expecting it. We didn't do a big preliminary uh, announcement. I didn't do any videos of us in the studio recording or anything like that. I literally was, I think two weeks before it dropped, I did a teaser on our social media page, which sparked people's interest because they were like, Oh, there's a post. Oh, it's a new song. Oh, what are we doing here? And and then it just kind of escalated from there. Um, it's always exciting when people start digging into your stuff, and then it sends them down a rabbit hole. You know, I can I can look at the the stats from my side of things and say, okay, well, they listened to the new song, and then it sent them down the rabbit hole of our other material, which means that they they liked the new song, especially if it's somebody who'd never heard of us before, which is, is also really cool. You can't not tell us what was the name of the song. Uh, I can't believe you're only telling me. So, that now, so. Well, the, the I'm name of the song, hurt. what's that? I said, I'm a little hurt that I'm just finding out about this now. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I, the, the name of the song, the song was written kind of about like the days of the civil war. It's written from the perspective of a father whose son goes off to, to fight in the war uh back way back when but it's uh it's songs called the lives of the innocent and uh it's a it, it was a, a big turning point for me because you know after or not not even a turning point but just after not having been in the studio and all the changes all the things that that i've gone through i i kind of wondered you know will this feel like the same experience will it come across the same way uh and the the final re- product of the recording, which I was very hands on with, uh, all of the in the like the mix down and the final production, post production, all of that, um, it it satisfied me to to that level of okay, yeah, nothing's really changed as far as my approach. So kind of knowing, yeah, I'm not. This isn't something I'm making a habit out of, but. It, it, in a in a simpler way of putting it i hadn't lost it yet you know uh, after after some time out i hadn't lost my edge the kids but, still got it the kid yes it. still got it still got it all right that's that's a, that's definitely a good best part of the past month so you know flip it on its head what's been the worst part of the past month uh, there really hasn't been a bad part of the month i'm i'm gonna be totally honest there hasn't been uh anything uh, things have been busy i've been very busy um busy with uh just keeping up with all the irons i've got in the fire and busy with the dads busy with uh uh, all the great stuff that's going on there um the rhythm that the family has found in the household has been really strong um i have you know and, and and I don't, we, I don't talk about her a lot, but my wife, it has been such an amazing support through all of these changes. Uh, and she has really helped me to find my ebb and flow in my place. Um, I remember one of the hardest discussions we had back when I was touring. Um, this is, this is probably Aiden was maybe one or two. Uh, so it was pre-COVID. I was touring really heavy. And the conversation, hard conversation my wife had to have with me was the fact that, honestly, it was it was more disruptive when I was home and it was easier when I wasn't home because of my infrequency and how everything, I come in like a tornado and then take off again. And 
so I've known that this whole process has taken her uh, some time to adjust to. And I know that it's taken me some time to adjust to. And she's been so gracious in helping me find that balance because I'm the one working myself essentially back into her and my kids' lives and not, you know, not the other way around. So um, this this month has been very satisfying in that respect in that, you know, we've got we've got a good rhythm. We, we've got a good um, way to, to kind of pull things together and um, not, it's not really anything about that. That's, that's been off about this, this past month. Fantastic. Um, I like that. The worst part was actually really positive. That's great. So <laughs> then I have to, then I get to ask the, the fun question. And then the number question number three, What's your best lead dad Roman been over the past month? I, I've had a couple of great lead dad moments. Uh, going back to the, uh, it was the, the beginning of February and my local Chick-fil-A decided to host a daddy daughter Valentine uh, dinner event which was so much fun. Uh, I, they, they have, there have been many things like that that have gone on in years past that I've always missed out on. I was always gone or just coming home from something. And, and so this was a Monday night and we did it up. So, you know, I, I dressed full black tie. Uh, she had her, big fluffy white dress where she she called herself the white princess she's just everything's a princess with her uh we were playing um sharks in the water out in the front yard the other day and she's like well can i be a shark princess and <laughs> can i be a doctor princess can i be a horsey princess and she's just like hey, you have to be a princess and then she'll come up to me it's so funny she'll come up to me and she's like princesses don't clean up messes I was like, have you watched Cinderella? I mean, that's all she did for like the first whole portion of her life was clean up everybody else's messes. Don't tell me princesses don't clean up messes. Uh, she is so sassy about it. She's like, I don't do that. I'm a princess. I was like, come on, girl. <laughs> but anyway, we, uh, we went to Chick-fil-A and they had all the tables like covered in white. It was paper, but it looked, you know, looked like classy white tablecloth. Uh, and then they, you come in and they take your picture with a Polaroid camera and then they sit you down and they serve the food on plates. And then, um, the Chick-fil-A cow comes around, you get your picture with him and, and all that. And it was, it was awesome to see all of these dads coming out of the woodworks with their kids, some of them with three or four girls and some of them with just one, uh, but just making that moment. Uh, how many of them dressed up for the occasion. Uh, some of them you could tell had literally just like come right out of work and maybe grab their kids, say hop in the truck, let's go. Um, but then some of them may have had a little bit more time and they came more formally or prepared for it. And it was, it was a beaming moment for me because, you know, I'm, I'm proud dad over here with my little girl and she's excited as I'll get out and she's got her flower that they gave her when she walked in the door and she's just like, Oh my goodness. You know, it's so, so certainly a lead dad, you know, proud moment there. And along the same lines, we had a, I don't know if it was that Saturday, it was a Saturday after, but we had a Saturday that was, I'm, I'm really bad because I'm going to back up here. You know, I, I'm, I'm working predominantly Monday through Friday on a lot of things, but then I also have uh, Sundays for church. And so most weeks, Saturday is my only day off. And so often because that's the case, Saturday gets slammed full of ketchup uh stuff to do and if for some reason i have a saturday that i have to to work or do something on it it takes you know the 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 five day 
or six day work week and turns it into a 14 day work week. Uh, it's, uh, it's very, um, very brutal and can sometimes be a little bit, uh, tough to manage. So I try really hard to make sure that I keep that at bay. I was really bad about it earlier on, uh, in this transition, but now I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm getting better about saying no Saturdays are for me and my family. And so this, this specific Saturday morning, I was very deliberate about not scheduling anything, absolutely nothing to schedule. And, uh, so I got up with the kids, uh, Stephanie was sleeping in and we're just playing games and doing stuff on a you know typical Saturday morning. And they're saying, Oh, we're hungry. We're hungry. So I was like, well, let's, let's make French toast. Okay. So we go into the kitchen, we start making French toast and, uh, Adeline's more of the, I like doing stuff in the kitchen. Aiden's more of the, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, he took the role of, I'm going to turn the kitchen into the restaurant that now mommy's going to wake up and come in and have brunch at this restaurant. So he made a sign for the restaurant and he made a, a menu so that she could order off of it. And so we turned it into a big old event. We, we had a brunch cafe where I was wearing, uh, you know, I had my toga and my apron and, and Adeline had hers and we were doing all the cooking and all this stuff. And he was in there getting drinks and all this stuff. And, uh, and then, uh, so Stephanie comes in and we're just, we're having a great morning. And so, and then we finish eating and he takes off into the bedroom. He's like, don't go anywhere. Okay. So then he goes in and <laughs> he digs into this big bin of costumes that he has and he, what he wants to do. And I know this will be something you're, you'll experience very soon. He wanted to turn the brunch into a Disney character meet and greet brunch. So he takes it to a, a whole different level and he puts on this uh, Mike Wazowski costume that he had in, in his closet and he comes in and he's like, you know, walking around with his arms out like this and, and, you know, doing the whole thing. And he's like, do you want to get a picture? You know? And so we start snapping pictures and then Adeline takes off and she puts on a princess dress and she comes out and she's like, I'm Cinderella. Come get a picture with me. And you know, it just, it became a whole thing that just took it to a different level. And I was like, this is what Saturday mornings are all about. And, you know, St Stephanie being, uh, the Disney fanatic that she is, you know, she, she loved that, but with the, you know, put on the music and then you go and have the character meet and greet and you have brunch and all this stuff. And it's just that, that was, that was a Supreme lead dad. I'm home with my kids. I'm owning the position of the dad stuff and we're having a blast doing it. And it's moments like that, that make any tough moment. Maybe that's why I didn't feel like there was a, a, a worst part of the month is because it was overridden. Any, any potential worst part of the month was overridden by the, the, the high points of, you know, being a lead dad and being a part of the kids lives in those, in those perspective areas. So big lead dad opportunities there. That is pretty awesome. And it's, it's so awesome because you can't, you know, choreograph a moment like that you can't script it out it, it just the kids get inspired and they do it and you can totally envision it like you know the, the big brother going out and doing this and then the little sister is like oh i gotta what i gotta mm -hmm. do the same and then it's it's that's wonderful yeah, uh i should have i should have i should have put these questions in better order 11 months ago because we ping pong between good and bad good and bad good and bad but you know now the flip side of this is what's been your most challenging lead dad moment in the past month most challenging. Yeah. Uh, well, like I said, it, it's been a very busy month and I put a lot of thought into this throughout the month. Uh, and I think it's something that, that needs to be heard, especially from dads, you know, being you know, what we call a lead dad here at the company of dads, uh, is it's a very, um, we can call it a noble position. We can call it a, uh, a humble position, uh, a humbling position, whatever you want to call it. It can also at times be a very, very busy position. 
And so one thing that I am, I'm, I don't know what part of my personality is like this, but I know I've always been like this. It's like, if I'm going to bother to do something, it has to be the absolute best I have to offer. I can't kind of do it. I don't give myself a whole lot of grace in areas where, you know, realizing I could improve. I, I'm paranoid over uh, things that I feel like I'm dropping the ball on or things that I think that I'm, and and, and it's a very, very much a, I've got to do this kind of thing. So when it comes to being, you know, both a full-time provider, a lead dad, uh, get, get the mess done, all of that type of person. One thing I am not good at doing, but I, I, I learned a really big lesson on about the busy side of this past month is asking for help. I don't know that a lot of dads see that as an option or, or, you know, they, they, it's pro, it most likely is there for them, whether it be a friend, be your, your partner, your spouse, um, or even just being more delegatory when it comes to the things that your kids do, depending on their ages. I have a really hard time with asking for help. And I, I had to really kind of own the fact in some of the areas this past month with the schedule that I've had to keep and everything that I've had, um, I, I, I've had a, an extracurricular project with some of the work that I've been doing that has tied up a lot of my time. Um, and so there have been a lot of things that I have had to be like, look, I need some help. Uh, and that help has come in a lot of different areas. And it, and it kind of helped me realize that in those moments, the only person holding me back from achieving a lot of that help is me. It's not the people that offered it or the people who followed through with it. It's me not asking for it. And so uh, not really a, the, a bad lead dad moment, but is it, the way that I, I it kind of ties in is that I, I, I had to prioritize first. Well, what, what is it that I want help with? Because if what I want help with is some of the stuff that I'm I'm heavily dependent on it as a, a dad, then I'm not getting that. I'm not owning that lead dad role. And the, and it, so, so it's like, okay, well then what are some other areas that I could get some help in so that I can be more prominent in the lead dad role? So that's the, it's kind of the work through there for me has been, okay, my priority needs to be here. That's where my kids want me to show up. That's where I'm, I'm most needed. Anything else that I have going on, I need to make sure that I'm filtering it through that. And if I need some help, I don't, it's, it's not healthy to sit there and panic over all of the things that you aren't getting done. And then you're not showing up lead dad wise. Um, you're, you're, it, 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 you know, it puts you back at the, the point of kind of pushing all of that to the side for the sake of whether it be work or other, other details, other responsibilities, but it doesn't have to be that way. And if you can, if you can extend the, uh, the ask of help in different areas to, to your surrounding, most likely you'll get through that short period of time, get ahead of what it was that you were, you know, was holding you back. And then you can kind of move on forward. Uh, and you don't, it doesn't have to be like some big admittance of I permanently need help for the rest of my life on this one. I think that's one of the reasons why dads look at, they might look at it that way. They look at it as, well, if I ask for help, then this is me admitting for all eternity that I am not capable of delivering. And that is just a, that's a, it's a hard and, and albeit prideful uh, walk to take. And so I think that it's important to remember that when you need it, ask for it. And that was, that was a, a, a portion of uh, both the, the hardest part of this past month, the 
the the realization of prioritizing the lead bad ship and the humility of being able to ask for help. That's amazing. Um, it almost sounds like that would be your lesson learned for the month, or was there another lesson uh, that you learned as well? I mean, that's I'll a pretty say that one, was pretty heavy one. That was my that was my lesson learned. I'll I'll give you my son's lesson learned. Um, hard lesson learned. So uh, he's been playing this uh, game, Paper Mario. Is it was actually a N sixty four game, but they released it on the Switch. Uh, so it's kind of been updated, but anyway, he's been playing it for quite a while and bless his heart. He, he does the best he can. He usually needs a healthy dose of help from, uh, from mom and dad, but we will get him to the point of defeating his foe and then hand the controllers back to him and he can actually get the final blow in and he can, he can take him out. And so he, he gets all the way down to the very end of the game He's at the final boss battle, and it comes in two phases. You defeat him in one area, and then he moves on, he powers up, and then you defeat him one final time. And he was, he already defeated him the first time, goes to move on to defeat him the second time, and he accidentally deleted the entire profile. The game, the progress, all of it. I... I felt so bad for him. He was crushed. And he like he just went in his room, he started crying. He's like worked so hard to get to that point. And and, and of course mom who'd done well, How do you good, do that? How do you how do you delete it all at once? Just it accidentally hit something? Yeah, well, it's like when you when you die, it takes you back to the main menu and you have to restart and it picks you up at the last save point. And it took him back to the main menu and he hit say X instead of a and X pulled up the menu. Do you want to erase this profile and him still learning his, you know, he's in first grade and he does really good with reading, but the, you know, a whole, whole sentence like that, he's still grappling with and he just clicks. Yes. Gone. Disappeared. It's crazy. I felt so bad for him, but then, I, after he kind of got over it and he he brought it up one time he's like yeah I'm, I'm, i deleted my profile it's like it was a lesson learned wasn't it and just when when in doubt just ask mom and dad well we'll we'll make sure that you don't do something like that again don't don't get in such a hurry that's the other thing he gets in a hurry about everything uh so um i, I did want to share one little nugget here though uh, it was something i was contemplating sharing on uh, the last episode and then I never did and then I just I kind of wanted to to dive into it because it was something that my wife had put out there and it, and I mean it to kind of be a, a good word of encouragement um, so reverting back to the last episode you know we went on the cruise we went to Disney World and all that stuff and there was a there's an attraction in Magic Kingdom called uh, Enchanted Tales with Belle uh, and you literally you go in uh, and they assign all of these little kids roles in the Beauty and the Beast story. And then you go into another room and Belle comes in and you act out a play with her, the Beauty and the Beast story. Back in 2016, we had gone to Magic Kingdom, just her and I, we had no kids. And we didn't know what kind of attraction that was. And we... Uh, we went in and saw all the kids and all of this stuff. Well, the thing that we weren't prepared for was the fact that at that point we had been trying and very unsuccessful for about two and a half years at having kids. And it was, um, it was a tough point for us that, you know, seeing all of this and, especially for my wife and, and going through the emotional roller coaster of seeing all of these kids and, and really longing for that. And it wasn't for another eight or nine months that we even, you know, that something came through, but we, uh, we were able to go back to that same event this past trip with two kids 
and go in and see that realization of kind of the full circle effect uh, of, you know, kind of the struggle that we went through and then seeing how things had changed and all of that. So is, you know, one of those things that, that again, as a, as somebody who takes being a father, very, very serious, uh, just feeling like, you know, there's, there's always a reason and there's always hope and things that you're going through in the moment may not look the same, you know, a year, two years, five years down the road. Um, the important part is to, to just keep your chin up and keep pushing, keep doing what you got to do. And, and, uh, and I don't, I don't know. It was, it was a really special thing, but it was, it was special for me that it was something that she acknowledged my wife, uh, just kind of rising above feeling more empowered over that realization. And, uh, I, I know it's a, that's a, a tender subject, but it's something that I really felt was a, a big part of our family history that I, I wanted to share. And I just, I didn't bring it up last time, but I wanted to this time. So, uh, kind of a, a good anecdote to leave on. It's a great one to, to leave on. Cause it's, you know, it, it's full circle. We don't always get those moments, but when we do to acknowledge it, but also, to, you know, like you said, to give other people hope, like what you're going through now, you know, good and bad, you know, it, it's not going to be like that, um, in the future. So life's full of seasons. Yeah, appreciate the good stuff and know that the bad stuff will 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 end. Mm -hmm. um, Skip Cherry Holmes, another month uh, in the bag. Lead Dad Diaries number eleven. Please, everyone, join us for the, the number twelve, the the last and final Lead Dad Diaries, where we'll have a special guest and wrap up this amazing year that we've all spent together. Thank you, as always, Skip. Thank you, Paul.